This is Jana and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making Belgian waffles. Oh my gosh, it's a family favorite forever. I don't know anybody who doesn't like a Belgian waffle, truthfully. What I'm gonna start out with is I got five, uh, is I've got two and a half cups of flour, just all purpose flour in this bowl. And then I'm going to take uh, four egg yolks. You have to divide the eggs, keep the egg whites because we're gonna use those in just a minute. Get all of that out of there, yum. And now I'm gonna beat the egg yolks. My handy dandy old fashioned egg beater works perfect. You wanna use these until nice and light and fluffy. Because remember, everything that goes into your Belgian waffles needs to be fluffy. And we're just about there until they're nice and streaming. Can you see how they're streaming? That way you know they're beaten. Okay, get the, all that goodness out of there. Okay, now. What I did ahead of time, just to save you time in watching this, is I have two cups of warm milk. I just put it in the microwave just for a few seconds. Just keep um, checking. If you have a thermometer, check it till it's about 100 to 110 Fahrenheit. And then um, remove that and then put in one pack of um, either rapid rise or regular rise yeast, depending upon how much time you want to take. And let that set until it's nice and blossomed. Do you see how there's a, the yeast on top has blossomed? And that's what you want, so you know that the yeast is good. And then we add the yeast mixture. It takes about five to 10 minutes, whoopsie, for the um, yeast to bloom. All these little things. Made a big mess. This does take a few dishes. <laughs> I'm just gonna mix those two together. Thank you, Erin. Messy mess. There we go. Now I'm gonna switch bowls. And in here I have four egg whites. The other, the egg whites that go with the egg yolks. Those are in here. Whoopsie, something not in there. Oh, mixer was not in there. I didn't do a good job of checking that. And you can use your hand mixer for this too, your hand beaters, the egg beaters. And I normally do do it by hand, but I had to use both of them on. And you wanna beat the egg whites. We'll come back in just a minute. Um, you're gonna to wanna to beat these egg whites just until they are nice, um, Heavily soft peaks, almost stiff peak. You want to get those nice and, and what I talk about with peaks, this is what I talk about with peaks. See, that's mounding, that's not peaks. You might be able to get it done. These are cooperating. I had them room temperature, so that does help with beating them fast. These are, it's a really wonderful breakfast. If you win everybody out, for breakfast at a restaurant to eat Belgian waffles. They charge like $12.99 for one Belgian waffle. <laughs> it's like, yikey, mikey. I just can't. When I go out as much as I like Belgian waffles, I won't order them because I know how much they cost to make. Pennies. Okay, now I'm going to show you these peaks. See, that's a stiff peak. When I pulled it up, See? But if you beat them too long, guess what happens? They call, it's called breaking, and then they just become um, stiff. And you don't want them stiff. That's not good, because then they're hard to fold in. There we go. So now we got all of our ingredients ready to go. So now I've got our flour, and I'm gonna have the written recipe below, so you don't have to write it down as I go here. You can put it in the so now we added in our milk. We're gonna add in a stick of butter, melted. You don't want it hot, you wanna let it cool for a minute. 
and I have a tea, uh, teaspoon of salt, and I have a tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. That is all of our ingredients. I'm going to use the whisk. I think somebody's about to come in the door. These are good. You can make these savory. You can make them sweet. I know today, hello, I know today that um, I'm going to make these with a um, Belgian sugar or a Swedish sugar. And that is one of my favorite ways. My husband likes his plain. I like mine with the um, Belgian sugar in. And these you can make ahead of time. I always make a big batch because they're easy. Just put them in a gallon Ziploc bag with a piece of parchment in between them and you stick them in the freezer. And when you want them out, I just turn the oven on for a few minutes and put them on a cookie sheet and they are ready to go again. So we want to mix these together. They don't have to be perfectly smooth batter for pancakes and waffles and such. You don't want to over mix them. Okay, there. And now we're going to take the egg white mixture and this is called folding in. You add a little bit of your egg whites to start and you fold it in. You add a little bit more, fold it in. Just kind of use your wrist and go around in circles. You don't want to beat that because it'll take the air out of the waffle, out of the eggs. You can hear our golden retrievers in the background. Bailey, whenever I'm talking, he's all excited. He goes and grabs a bone and he wants to be on camera. This is still early on a Sunday morning and so he hasn't been groomed, so we're not gonna put him on. He might decide to put himself on camera. I can tell he's right behind me dropping his bone. That was Jack? Oh, okay. I should have known he wasn't breathing as hard. <laughs> There we go. We'll just keep adding in these egg whites. You can hear their tails whapping in the background. Whap, whap, whap. That means love when you hear tails whapping. That's just like a great big old heart. You know what, I'm gonna hand this to you. I don't wanna smack it on the other bowl. So if you don't have as many bowls as I do, it's okay. You just have to have a big bowl and then you can just keep washing your other one. When you beat egg whites, just so you know, when you're breaking your eggs, if you get any yellow part in the egg white, they're not gonna beat up because that's fat and egg whites won't beat if they have fat on them. So make sure your bowl is clean and free of any grease. There. See, even if there's a little bit of egg white in there, that's okay, because that's fluffiness. So we've got it all mixed in. And now there's yeast in this, remember? So I'm gonna go off the camera right now and we're gonna let this rise. And that's why you have to have a big bowl, because these are gonna rise a little bit. And I'm going to let this set for about um, 10 to 20 minutes. And then we're gonna start our Belgian waffle maker and I've got it right behind me, and so I'm gonna get those plugged in and ready to go, and we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, we're back, and it's been, I would like to say, five to 10 minutes. However, if you notice my apron with a big spaghetti smash smart on it, I went to go get the syrup out of the, maple syrup out of the refrigerator, and I don't know why, I hadn't opened the refrigerator all morning. Well, yes I did, but anyway, a spaghetti sauce container fell from the top shelf of the refrigerator and hit every part of the refrigerator, the floor. Anyway, my feet, <laughs> it was nice. Anyway, so if you see any spaghetti sauce on me, it was, see, it happens to everybody, right? Okay, I have my Belgian waffle maker. For my family, I have it on medium. You can put it on dark if your family likes them dark. And then I'm spraying with the Pam. And putting a generous amount of Belgian waffle 
you know, I don't care if it comes out the side a little bit. I just want it all the way full. And then I like to add Swedish or the bigger Belgian pearl sugar right to the top. And that's another reason why you want Pam on it. And guess what? I like mine like that with some strawberries on top. I don't have any strawberries today. But I don't even need maple syrup or pancake syrup at all if I do that. And it's perfect. My husband likes his plain. I like mine with the pearl sugar on it. And I love it. And it doesn't take very long. And how you're going to tell when it's done. Right now it's about, you can maybe see it better over here. I don't know. Can you see the steam, Erin? Okay. You're going to see it's going to start steaming a lot at the beginning. And as the steam reduces, that's how you know your um, waffle can check. Because if you open that up right now, you're going to have a big old mess. Big old mess. So do not open it too, because it will separate and you'll have to go in with a toothbrush and clean it all out. Don't do that. How do you know? How do I know that? Because of what I just told you. I learned the hard way, so hopefully you won't have to. I have a second Belgian waffle maker over here. And I'm just going to play, put in just a plain waffle for my husband. Move my mix over here. Hopefully we're not going to do a spaghetti incident with this bowl. And there we go. Just like that. If you note, on my cooktop, I have down all the dishcloths. I have old pizza pans that I use for my Belgian waffles, and then I put parchment over it. Do you know why I do all this? Because if you have a gas stove or electric, and you're working with batter, moving it from side to side, you're gonna end up cleaning your stove and your grates and all of the little cracks in between and on the edges of your cooktop. Why do you wanna do all that? <laughs> so, easier for me to take three dish towels, throw them in the laundry and a few pieces of parchment paper, and I'm done. Then I just have to uh, wipe off my Belgian waffle makers at the end and I'm ready. Okay, it's still steaming pretty good here. Yep, I'm not going to touch it too soon. And that's another way is you can just start to barely lift it and you can tell. And I have them both on medium. Like I said, one of the things I like to do is the strawberries. I just take my Belgian waffle out and I put strawberries over the top of it with um, whip, the spray can of whipped cream, real whipping cream, and serve them just like that. And it's so pretty, it's beautiful. And all of our guests always like it that way too. You can use mixed berries, blueberries, raspberries, um, blackberries, whatever your family likes. And like before school, you can cut these in quarters and pop them in the toaster and hand them to your kids in a, in a piece of parchment paper and send them out the door. And they can eat them on the way to school. And look at all the eggs and everything that's already in it. So, and dairy because of the milk. See, there's one waffle and that is cooked light. Since this one is mine, <laughs> I'm gonna cook it for just a few more minutes, but you can see the steam is almost completely gone. It's like not clouding up anymore. And this one over here is still steaming vigorously. So I know it's not ready to turn. Jack and Bailey are back in the house. They've been following their dad around. You hear Jack getting a drink in the background. <laughs> and there we go. That is just about ready. I am seconds away from removing my waffle. And those are, I know it's a long video, but those are lessons that you're not going to regret having me, have, having been told. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. There we go. One down. And then we're going to have one more to go. I always put the Belgian waffle maker and reheat it again before I put the batter on because that way you're going to get a nice evenly cooked waffle every single solitary time. And this one is, to, you can, while this one's going, you can go around and clean up the edges of it with a spatula or a fork or whatever if you want them, you know, for guests. See? 
steam is way down. Ooh, that's just how my daughter and my husband like theirs. Nice and golden. Erin, can you get a good picture of that? I'm gonna put one on a plate here. You can see those little pieces of sugar in there. And are they delicious, because they're kind of a toasted. It's almost a cotton candy, but not that sweet. Almost a cotton candy sensation when you put it in your mouth. It's just that nice, crisp sugar taste. So that is gonna be mine in just a few minutes. And I serve them with a sausage, and then my husband will put his with butter and pancake syrup. So there's reheated, and I'm gonna keep going. Thank you for stopping by Jana's Kitchen, and please like, subscribe, Share with your family, because you know who in your family loves Belgian waffles. By the way, I forgot to tell you, this was my dad's um, Belgian waffle maker. And I know that it's probably getting to be at least 30 years old, if not longer. And I happened to go on eBay and find one just exactly like it. And I thought if anything ever happened to this one, I would be so sad. So I have a second one, but it works out perfect for making waffles in a very quick way. Thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time.